All right, folks, welcome. Thank you all for uh, making it out today. Um, my name is Emmett. I'm the announcer today. We're going to be doing a brief 10-minute uh, questions and answers at the end of this discussion. But without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is Troy Lee, Senior Vault Infrastructure Engineer at Strategic Group. Go ahead and give him a big round of applause. Thanks, Emmett. Um, good morning, all, and thank you for coming to my presentation. Uh, my name is Troy Lee, and I'm here to talk to you about custom wizards, components, and dashlets in Nagios XI. Um, you can see there I do have my email address, Twitter, and that URL there is a location on the Nagios Exchange that shows all of my projects. Um, some stuff I won't even talk about here. There's a lot there. You can go and have a look. Before I take you through my presentation, I just thought I'd start off and explain who I am and how I've come here to talk to you today. Who am I? I'm just like you. I'm passionate about IT and every day I work for a company where I get to make a difference to the value I deliver to our clients. The company I work for is called Strategic Group. As you can tell by my accent, I'm Australian. Um, I have been, I spent the last seven years of my life with Strategic Group. My journey with Strategic Group started by providing on-site support to clients and um, customising and creating solutions around that. The last few years have been somewhat different. Um, in 2005 we decided to create a complete server replacement solution that we call Vault. Um, I, th I think the irony with this is that while we called it Vault, the world would soon catch up and call this cloud. And Nagios XI is the monitoring solution we have chosen for Vault. The real value that Nagios brings to Vault is understanding the baseline performance of our environment and then being able to observe that. It's been very handy. Also, getting alerts when the server room temperature is increasing is somewhat handy. Although the Vault journey is exciting in itself, some of us may have uh, said that it was good luck that we came up with the idea. Others would say that we've planned Vault. But in the end, it's how we approach every day thereafter that has helped define us as a company. And it's this approach that I'm excited to contribute to. It's helped define who I am as an engineer and how I approach my work every day. At the beginning of this year, I was awarded one of eight MVPs for my work for the Nagios community in the year 2011. And last night I was also awarded for this year, which is really great. So that's one of the key reasons why I'm here to talk to you today about all the projects I've created. So why Nagios XI? My journey started out, and I use the word journey a bit because I do see life as a series of journeys. I played with Nagios a couple of months before XI was released. And I could see it was a very powerful monitoring solution. However, it had that Linux component. And I'm a Windows guy, and that was a barrier to me. But it got to me. A few months later, I was still thinking about XI, and it was nagging in my head. So, Well, not XI, but Nagios. So I did what all of us do, and I jumped on Google and Googled Nagios. And Google, and in its infinite wisdom, told me that XI had just been released. I love Nagios XI. Why do I love Nagios XI? Because it's a virtual machine, I can download it and I have a complete monitoring solution all in one that just works off the bat. This is what I believe a virtual appliance should be. Out of all the things you can do with XI, why did I choose to monitor configuration wizards and, and customise them and create my own? Well, to an administrator that is new to Nagios, there's a lot to learn. For example, all of us here would want to monitor XYZ device in their environment. So you would get on the Nagos Exchange and search for that device and you'll find a plugin. So you'll get the plugin and then you have to learn how to test it at the command line. Then you have to learn how to create a command definition. You then learn to add a service definition that uses that command definition. And that's a lot of things for a new administrator to Nagios XI to learn when they're just wanting to get out there and monitor their stuff. So what's the point of all of this? When I learn how to monitor XYZ device in my environment, I can turn around and write a wizard. So for you, 
that configuration wizard will automate that whole process. And within a couple of mouse clicks, you'll be monitoring that same device in your environment without all the hassles and hours of learning all the ins and outs. This is a summary of the configuration wizards I've written so far. The host creation tool is one that I'm particularly proud of. Not only does it have a few downloads, but also it was the inspiration for the bulk host import wizard that Nargis Enterprises developed themselves. In 2010, the VMware monitoring wizard allowed me to win the Nargios Seed Camp competition. So that was a good one as well. These are all available for download at the Nargios Exchange. And if you have trouble finding them, I'm sure Google will more, be more than happy to tell you where to go. When I first started out, there was no official documentation for Nagios XI and configuration wizards. So after creating a couple of wizards, I decided to put some notes together and create my own documentation. Some of these are a little bit outdated now, but in particular, the service relationship map is still a very handy document. Also, the Box 293 demonstration wizard is what I'll focus on in this presentation. It's what I call documentation. Uh, it, it, when you look at the code, it's heavily commented, so anyone looking at it can understand how it all fits together and works as they go through the stages. This is the service relationship map. It's a bit hard to see. It's a massive PDF. Um, the point of it is it shows you how everything's related to each other. You've got your Windows performance monitor counter, how that works at the command line, how that command line relates to a command and how it work relates to a service, how actually the configuration file is at the bottom and this is the steps here in the uh, configuration wizard itself. And even if you aren't writing configuration wizards, if you're new to XI or if you're migrating to XI, this is just a handy visual reference. Um, I created this because I didn't want to forget. It was something that took me a while to understand. I once was new to Nagios, so. So since then, Nagios has released official documentation. Um, there is, they have one for writing custom wizards for XI, and I highly recommend you read this. Um, the Box 293 demonstration wizard is very, it relates to all the documentation that's here. Also, the XI component development has some handy information about accessing the back-end databases. Um, I recommend you read that as well. So let's talk about configuration wizards. Firstly, I'll say a lot of what I'm going to talk about here might seem like programming common sense, but I'm the first to admit that I'm not a real programmer. So a lot of this is my experience and, and how I've um, learnt along the way. One of the key concepts I aim for with my configuration wizards is to provide all the help and configuration steps on the first step of the wizard. This means the user doesn't have to go off and find a manual on how to use it. Um, things like how to configure SNMP on a Windows server. It's those simple things that removes those barriers from people learning how to get in and monitor their devices. All of this information is in hidden divs. So it's not like this information gets in the way every time they run the wizard. They can expand it and collapse it as they feel like. Where possible, you should automate the data collection process. Um, an example of this is in the Nagios network switch router wizard, it talks to the switch and gets information about the ports, presents a lovely table, and with check boxes you can select, and it, it just means that confirms that the device you've spoken to is answering your requests and it makes it easy for the user to select things. A bad example was my VMware wizard where I just didn't do much validation on it. That was one of my very early wizards and I do plan to revamp that at some stage. It's just on the back burner at the moment. So now I'm going to delve into configuration wizards. So this is the configuration, the configure tab. And from the Configure tab, you can click the Monitoring Wizard. This, this is, presents you with Step 1, and it shows you a list of all the available configuration wizards you can run through. One thing I did want to point out is, as we go through the different steps, the step number doesn't directly correlate to the stage number in the PHP code, and I'll show you that as we go through. Why? 
I'm not entirely sure.